guys and welcome back to another unfiltered gamer board game review today's game up on the tabletop is the lost worlds of josh kirby the game plays two to four players takes about a half an hour to 45 minutes to play and is for ages mm, eight and up and in the game the lost worlds of josh kirby you're going to be exploring the lost worlds of josh kirby josh kirby is a excellent artist you might know of some of his work from the original star wars posters back in the late or early 80s uh where he did the posters for the uh the jedi return of the empire and all that good stuff you can check out his stuff online in this all of this is the artwork that wasn't shown and it is basically a game in which you're going to be touring these areas you're going to either be trying to contest them or trying to gain allegiance with them regardless though you're going to be trying to gather these lands place them into your area and uh roll dice in order to acquire them placing your spaceships out bringing them back putting them into this like chaos area and pulling them back onto your ship you're also working against other people visiting these lost worlds attempting to do the same thing and the objective is to hit 18 points once that happens the game is going to trigger a last final round where everybody gets to take a full turn and then you're going to tally up your points with any bonus scoring points because each of these boards here which are your player boards are going to have bonus points potentially on how far you go whether you're a complete tyrant or destroying the lands of the worlds or whether you're a savior trying to save them gathering two victory points on either end and there's a one or nothing which also has to do with whether or not you're not going to get to roll or re-roll extra dice on your turn it's a very simple game as to how it's played but it's got a bit of strategy it's quick it's fun let's go ahead and take a look down below so here's the Lost Worlds of Josh Kirby and everything present in the game for the prototype. You're going to get player boards and based on the number of players, every single player is going to get one. There's yellow, red, purple, blue, and green here, which are shown. This is set up for three players though. And I'll just talk about the setup right now. We'll talk about what you get in the game and then we'll come down and just talk about how a round works. So every player's got these player boards here. They're gonna have these guys here, which are known as your champions. Place them over here so it's easier to see that the fact that you're going to need to be on this side of the board to utilize them and how much renown it's going to cost same will be said for the dreadnought which is your piece starting with this one here which will place onto planets regarding whether or not you own the dreadnought or not the same is said you have to move over on this side of the board any of these side to use the dreadnought every single player is going to get three ships and the other three will be placed into this little area here which is where you're going to be basically bringing them back to your ship bringing them out here and then when they are done they'll go here uh, the dreadnought can be placed here as well We've set aside these pieces here, but the idea is you're going to get these little tokens, you're going to get the spaceships, the champion, and your player board. The game is pretty simple. You're going to use these cards here, and they're going to have different types of cards that function in different ways. They're going to have powers on the bottom. This is going to be the conquered side over here, and the other side is going to be the savior side, the way you're going to be saving it. You're going to place this, shuffle it, and then you're going to deal out one for each of the number of players. These are your world powers. When you gain these cards here, you're going to basically be putting one of these on them to signify when you use their ability, you'll take it off. These tokens here are renowned and they are used for special abilities, which will be found over here on your player board on the bottom left. On the, the bottom right is it's gonna explain the different types of die and how they're going to be utilized. And then in the middle explains how your turn works. And it's very simple. You'll take the die, all three of them. You're going to roll the die and then you're going to assign them, which will explain in a little bit we go down below but for the most part that's how you set the game up that is what everything comes with the clean the blocks and of course the rules let's take it down below now i will explain the game fully and then my review Okay, so this is the Lost Worlds of Josh Kirby, set up for three players. I took away the fourth and fifth player tokens and boards because we don't need that. We've got our renowned here. We've got our planet or colony areas here, which we have little tokens for, and our deck. And we're just going to go ahead and show you a just one turn of the game, how it functions. This is a special die, which you'll be able to utilize whenever you spend money or a renowned, which is the currency in the game. This is three renowned to use the epic die. To use a world power again, you're going to need to spend five, and you can place it on a world that you own and then you have the place of the champion place the dreadnought which will also coincide with which side you are on your specific board based on how you gather these cards here so this purple player is going to go first and they're going to go ahead and roll the die here as you can see there is a flag there is a little uh, fist symbol and then you got this symbol here which is for renowned and then the other symbol is movement so for a flag basically how it works is when you ever you roll a flag that's going to allow you to take one of your ships off of your player board and place it on any side of the card or on the left hand side of the card with a flags are 
This number indicates how many of your ships need to be there in order to claim the card. And the same can be said for these fists, which is the conquering side that you place on this side here. Regardless of which side you choose, the objective is to gain all, put all your ships on there based on the number before anybody else does. So if I place five ships here and somebody places five ships here, they're going to get this card and I'm going to lose all my ships back to my main area here. So you have to be very careful how you choose to place your ships and where you choose to place them. And down below here is a special ability you'll get when you conquer the card. So if I roll this, that's my first turn, I re roll the die, I can then go ahead and roll again based on the die I'm allowed to roll. And that's going to be determined based on where this little token or marker is. Right now it's in the middle, so I can re-roll all of them again. And right now I kind of like this one here, so I'm going to go ahead and roll these two. All right, which is the exact same die roll. So that will let me gather to renowned. I'll place them on my player board somewhere. And then I can go ahead and place one of my ships on the flag area. I'll place it here. And one of my ships will go on to the attack area. After that, my turn is pretty much done. During your turn, if you wanted to, and you had the renown, you could spend the renown to do these abilities, but only on your turn, along with world powers as well. Next player is going to get a chance to go, and they'll roll their die here. They're then going to decide if they want to re-roll anything. They'll take this one here and re-roll, and now they get to go ahead and place. This one here allows you to move your ships, whether they be on here, you can move them around, or whether they be here, you can move them back here. So right now it says two, so I'll move two over here. This one over here is, is two fights, so I'll simply take these two and place them here, and then I have two of these uh, flags, so I'll place them over here, which is means which means that we're competing now, and that's what's going to happen, and especially in a uh, three or more player game. If you take one of these spaces or one of these worlds before somebody else, you'll get your ships returned to you, and you're going to get a re you're going to get renowned. Okay, so next player's turn here. Simply rolling the die again. Well, those are actually pretty good. I'll reroll this one here. That's two movement, two flags, and two renowned. Take the two renowned, take these and place them on the flag area, and then I'm going to take uh, the movement for two. And then it's just going to simply rinse and repeat. And like I said, if we get this guy here, let's go ahead and just show you a random roll. Um, actually, we'll have it just like this, I suppose. If this was the roll for this guy here, he would get to take two ships back. He could then place two ships on here and then one ship on here. And then that involves claiming. So these, whenever you claim something, all of your ships that claim it go here. These ships are going to go back to the player who had them, and they're going to take Renowned. And this is going to go based on where you gathered it from. So whether you're doing the flag side or the fist side, in this case it was the flag side, so I'll place it over here like that. We're then going to take one of these markers and place it here, indicating that we haven't used the planet's ability now that we've gained it. But whenever you want on your turn, you can spend this to gain this ability. A new card will come out, and you'll keep using your die if you have any left to use. And if not, your turn is pretty much over. In this case, he'll want to use this, so I'll spend this ability. It says I gain one Renowned, which is nice. And then I also can steal a Renowned from another player. Now it goes to this player's turn, and it just keeps going like that until somebody gets to 18 points. And to get to 18 points is very, very simple. You're going to add up your points, whether they be flags or whether they be fists. And once that happens, there's a one more round of the game, and then you're going to tally up your points. And points are just based on these, as well as if your marker moves. The last thing to talk about is just how markers work. So for instance, this guy got a flag, so he's actually going to move this over one space just like that, indicating he gained a flag. If he were to gain one that was a fist, a conquered area, he'd move back here. If he gained another flag, it'd go like this. Additionally, if you notice, there are certain colored die based on the area that you move to. When you roll die on your turn, so on his next turn, he'll roll these die, and then he can only choose to re-roll these two. It has to leave this one as, as it stands. And the same can be said for over here. You would only get to re-roll the white die here. So be careful how you move across here. But additionally, it's going to score you more points to be on one side or the other at the end of the game. Plus one or plus two points, which could mean the difference between winning and losing. Overall, though, that's the basic idea of the game. The last thing I'll talk about is the dreadnought and the die here when we come up for my review, as well as your champion piece and how they function in the game, and then I'll tell you what I think about it. So before we get into my review for the Lost Worlds of Josh Kirby, let's go ahead and talk about the renowned abilities. And as you know, it's going to cost you a certain amount of renowned, and also it's going to cost you a certain amount of uh, a certain type of alignment for certain abilities. First one is placing a champion, which costs you two renowned, and you have to be on this side of the board. These are your little champion guys, and they're going to facilitate you in order to gather the cards. You'll place them down on the board, and based on where you place them, it'll cost you one less. It, well, it'll cost you one less of a specific type, whether it's flags or whether it's fight, to gain it. So if it says six and you have a champion there, it's only going to cost you five. 
Dreadnoughts, however, will be the opposite side of the board, which would be this side here, and you're going to use your player token along with the Dreadnought and place it on a certain area or a certain card, and that card is only going to be accessible by you, so you're only you're going to be able to gain it while your Dreadnought is there. However, there are some exceptions to that. The Epic Die, which is this big red one here, is going to cost you three. You're going to use this die and roll it with the rest of them, provided you play three and pay three Renown. It's going to let you double a die. It's going to let you uh, gain a full Renown, all your Renown back. It's going going to let you, uh, what are some other cool things let you do? It lets you gain a world power back and also let, could let you play your Dreadnought or your hero or champion regardless of your affiliation, whether you're a scoundrel, savior, or even a tyrant. So you'll be able to use that that way. And uh, that's pretty much it. The other one is just the world power where you'll spend five renowned and you'll get to place a world token back onto a power you control, which will let you utilize that ability. Simply like the one I talked about, you could spend the world token, gain a renown and steal one from another player. All the worlds have different specific powers and so choosing them is going to be based on your discretion. Otherwise, though, that's pretty much it for the game. Rolling dice, selecting the die you want to utilize, moving your ships off of the mystic waypoint to your board, from your board to one of the, the Lost Worlds of Josh Kirby, obtaining it, gaining points based on the number of players, which I kind of got wrong. Uh, it's 18 for two players, but it, it's more for different numbers of players, as well as, of course, planet the, the worlds is going to increase by one for each player in the game. All right, what do I think? Artwork. Phenomenal. Excellent. I love Josh Kirby's artwork. I think he is uh, he is a really, really good artist, and I'm a big fan of Star Wars, so uh, that, that plays probably a role in it as well. All of the new Lost Worlds, as you go ahead and take a look in the Kickstarter campaign, um, have all of his interesting artwork that hasn't been shown off, or at least not all that much. I'm not sure how it, how, how it works there, but uh, they look really good. They look like they're from the, er, the the mid to late 80s style artwork, and it's a lot of sci-fi, has a lot of cool, unique aspects to them. I don't know, I just really dig it. You got the plant, the, the, the uh, what do you call these little spaceship boards here, which work really well. This is all a prototype, so I don't know what it's going to look like when it's finally done, but I wouldn't mind if it was a player board, although this isn't bad for what it is as well. Um, all the ships and how they function, everything works really easily. The mechanics of this game is very, very simple. Anybody can pretty much pick this game up and play it. Young young kids will be okay with this one as well. Uh, the only thing they have to understand is how to, how to properly be able to read things. But as for how the mechanics work, I've played it with young kids. I've played it with older gents and ladies. And uh, overall, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't really have a lot of negative things to say about this game. If you like dice chucking games that have a little bit of a Yahtzee mechanic, a little bit of management, a little bit of politics, the more number of players you play, the better in my opinion, because that increases the chaos of the game and where you want to choose to place based on the worlds available to you. Because not getting a world is going to set you back, not rolling the right die is going to set you back. When you want to utilize your renown to gain either a dreadnought or a champion or all that is going to really determine how well you do in the game. And uh, it just works really well. It's quick, it's fun, it's it's simple, but it has a strong amount of strategy. It's a game that I would definitely pick up and play whenever, with anybody, at any point in time. If you want a quick game that's in the middle of like a filler to a medium style game, you're gonna dig The Lost Worlds of Josh Kirby. I personally really like this game, and I think if you enjoy, based on what I've told you for the mechanics and how the game functions, you're going to like this game as well. For those of you who don't like dice chuckers, because there's a lot of luck involved with dice chuckers, regardless of re rolls in this case you're only going to re-roll once and poten potentially only re-roll one die once after rolling the die and of course the worlds when they come out it's going to differ in what type of worlds they are and how likely it is you're going to get them so that being said that's the main probably qualm people might have about it but for me knowing the type of game it is doesn't bother me whatsoever enjoyed this game these guys have made another game called Fickle, which was really, really good as well. This one is no exception to the rule. Another excellent game by Bard Games. Really enjoyed this one. Take a look down below in the description below and let me know if it's something you'd be willing to pick up. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game, The Lost Worlds of Josh Kirby by Bard Games. If you're interested, like I said before, go ahead and hit the link down below. Click that, check it out on Kickstarter. I think you guys are gonna dig this one. You dice chuckers out there, you guys who like a little bit of Yahtzee mechanic with a little bit of uh, some other interesting aspects pushed in basically area control and whatnot it's fun it's it's definitely a unique twist to a game i've like game, same games i've similarly played before as well as checking our website unfilteredgamer.com blog posts giveaways kickstarter lists and more our live stream every wednesday 7 30 p.m pst win games with us enjoy that with the community we have a lot of fun a lot of fans that uh really enjoy what we do and if you like games like this you'll see it played on our live stream which is a lot of fun we play pick pickle live stream and it's very likely we'll try this one out as well and we do one shot campaigns D, &D. we've we've done a few now we've done one now we'll do another one soon 
<laughs> all right, guys, that's all I got for this time. And as always, I look forward to visiting the Lost Worlds of Josh Kirby with you next time.